Some major changes were just announced for Modern Warfare 2 when it comes to Warzone, multiplayer, DMZ, and so we gotta check it out. Now I will say after reading through this thing the first time through that it looked a little concerning at some points, but also really awesome at other points. So if you guys like these new informational videos, make sure to tap that like button. Let's me know you want to see some more content like this and stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. So let's just work our way through this blog. I will timestamp this video if I want to skip to specific spots like Warzone or just multiplayer or DMZ. A big change that's happened here is audio. That's been a big issue for me right now when it comes to playing this game. So like, it just seems like you can hear people, but you can't really tell where they're coming from or where they are. And that's mainly because the audio occlusion, which they, in this game is kind of determines like surface sounds and walls and stuff like that. It's been just completely messed up right now. Where like the smallest things can actually trigger to be a complete barrier when it comes to hearing the audio. They mentioned here specifically things like staplers or tiny things can actually be read as like walls. So they brought an example saying like a wastebasket that was tagged with the incorrect material may have occluded the sound like it was behind a wall, making it so hard to difficult to hear players and stuff like that. So that's absolutely huge to hear that. Uh, the UI is gaining a buff <laughs> because this might be one of the worst UIs I've ever seen in a video game. Uh, but they mentioned here specifically saying more polish to the social tab, including improved channel swapping and player muting. So. We'll see how that plays out. They also mentioned some things like my bundles things, uh, quick equips when it comes to the battle pass and things you buy from the store and stuff like that. Um, I'm not too crazy about it, but there's some other minor things you guys wanna check out there and pause the video if you guys wanna see it. We are getting some weapon balance changes as we am sure you guys know all about the meta when it comes to Warzone and multiplayer. Uh, I talked about this in my last Call of Duty video, showcasing the RPK and the Fennec are probably the two big things people are gonna know like, what are you doing to nerf these weapons? Because they're clearly the best ones in the game. My assumption, the RPK will probably get some recoil and the fact will probably get a damage reduction that kind of makes so it doesn't stand so above all the other SMGs. But a lot of the SMGs in this game are actually pretty good as well. But no details were given in this blog update. Uh, but once we do get that information, which they did state later in this blog, when we will get that information, I'll make sure to cover with you guys here on the channel. Obviously, the Battle Royale, the Warzone is what a lot of people are concerned about. One thing is that the Gulag is getting a big change, but it's going back to the 1v1 classic Gulag style, which, you know, I kind of like the uh, twist on the Gulag with the 2v2 aspect behind it and the Jailer and how you guys can actually work together to bring all four of you guys back. I think it's a really cool thing, though, it didn't really seem like it would really get utilized a whole lot from player data, from my assumption, at least from my experience as well, that most people are just trying to kill each other for the most part. And especially if you have a player that might not exactly know how to handle a 2v2 situation, gets himself killed really quick and easy, it leaves you in a 2v1, which you're kind of screwed over. So I would like to see the 1v1 come back. So I think the 2v2 was kind of a cool twist in the whole thing. They also mentioned specifically that the domination style flag point for control is coming back for the Gulag. So they're removing the Jailer, bringing back the one flag spot that you need to stand on in case the player doesn't want to move or whatever. So excellent to hear that right there. But they did say that they are going to be keeping the existing Gulag map, but they're just kind of tweaking it to make it much more 1v1. My assumption is that that tall platform will probably get either blocked off or removed or some kind of way to kind of level out the playing field literally a bit more within this but they did say they are working on a dedicated 1v1 map to come in future seasons so we'll probably season three maybe season four my assumption probably season three because uh, that's going to be a ma massive change right now and so they also updated the pool that include assault rifles submachine guns and light machine guns as primary weapons as the circle progresses but they also stated that the shotguns have been removed from the rotation while handguns will remain viable as secondary weapons which I don't know, I think for the Gulag, I, I kind of like having the pistol start or just pistol only. Especially like, I mean, my favorite Gulag is still the very first one from Warzone 1. I think that was just the best one that we've ever experienced. I think just having pistols, 1v1 with no, nothing to really pick up or anything like that. But it does seem like there are going to be pickups within Warzone 2's Gulag. Uh, they mentioned here specifically saying that uh, Gulag will grant lar a larger cash reward for players. So that's going to be awesome. And also saying that Gulag will spawn with cash cash as on the ground loot to encourage players to move around and stuff like that because if you guys have probably been playing Warzone 2 you probably know that the cash flow can be a bit difficult especially coming from a gulag so you begin more cash coming out of it and you're able to pick up more from it as well so that's gonna be great we're gonna be seeing more cash economy fixes coming in which is actually the very next section of 
this blog update as well. So it's a slight reduction to cash rewards for completing contracts, which I'm like kind of confused about that because I like how contracts are a big aspect of when it comes to gaining cash within this game mode. I didn't like it how in Warzone 1 you just kind of open any boxes, open enough of them, you can get 4,000, like bring your teammate back, yada yada, stuff, stuff like that. I like how you have to complete contracts or do specific things to get cash or at least get a significant amount of it to get you more engaged with the gameplay rather than just opening boxes and getting your loadout and only have to worry about ammo after that. So I do enjoy that change that Warzone 2 has. We'll see how much less cash you'll be gaining from contracts. They also say they'll be increasing the lowest cash value of cash piles from ground loot to 800 and from cash registers to 500 which was previously 100 so you get more cash from getting just looting and being interactive with the map so that's a good trade-off right there i would say so also saying cash can be acquired via ground loot containers and white stronghold supply boxes but no longer can be found in basic or legendary boxes so i think that's a fair trade right there like again like i mentioned i don't want to see like people focusing on just opening up regular boxes to get cash and not really interact with the map or, you know, really earn that money rather than just pressing E on a bunch of boxes, you know what I mean? Uh, they were talking about loot and inventory is getting some big changes. We've seen this kind of tweeted out, but now they actually have a, an official statement in a blog here saying that with looting and inventory, saying they're shifting away from the window slash menus to a floating loot that will just drop all over the floor so you can pick up stuff. So then basically like your auto looting with like saying the ammo and uh, armor plates will definitely would just be a lot faster, especially when you're opening up these boxes and all you need is like an armor plate or some more ammo. Uh, they also said that they're removing medium and large backpacks from the game and players will drop loot on the ground rather than a loot filled backpack so see like i kind of like the idea of having like a backpack upgrade so hopefully maybe it keeps it in wars and dmz i would definitely like to see that uh, they also say they were this they did reason why they did this is to reduce the impact of stacking medical supplies as in self revives which are everywhere right now in warzone 2 uh equipment as well as kill streaks now this might be a little concerning for me as the loadout changes that are coming in with warzone 2 saying warzone 2 will introduce customizable perk packages but they're saying that they'll have a kind of a reduced pool of perks it's not all of them at once so as see they're kind of doing a little bit at a time um i was you know the perk packages that they had in the game right now it's kind of meh i'm not really super for it but not super against it but again this will kind of just again whittle down like really your options to so kind of go right really toward the meta whatever that ends up being for perk stuff and uh, attachments and things like that also saying primary weapons will continue to be available at buy stations but now at a more affordable price point which i'm like i don't know like from what i'm playing like especially when i play solos 2500 for a weapon isn't really that much like it should be a considerable amount especially with the way that rpk plays out that's a legit power weapon like a halo power weapon in the game so uh, i i don't really know how i feel about that again i'll have to wait and see how it plays out uh, I do like the fact that you have to like really earn the cash to get your loadout weapons, to get your loadout drops and things like that. But making your loadout weapons more affordable means we'll probably see a lot more Fenix and a lot more RBKs with Season 2, unless they get significantly nerfed, which I'm sure they will, but we'll kind of see what happens. Also, loadout markers are getting an effect right here, saying the price of a loadout markers has been slightly reduced so that it's respective to squad size right there. We'll kind of see how it plays out. I've heard like roughly like 6,000 per player. Uh, for a cost of a loadout drop seems to be about fair. That sounds about right in my opinion. Again, we'll just have to wait and see. They also added in a second loadout drop for the public event kind of stuff for instead of just the first circle and now also drops at the fifth circle of the match. I do like what the changes they did with the public drops. And so now it's not just a uh, squad specific, it's like just to the whole lobby. Add some cool like dog fighting kind of stuff happens right there uh big change here three plates are for everybody now everyone just has three plates we're seeing a change to movement as well when people first saw this they're talking about like oh my god you'll be moving faster yes and no saying that season two players will be able to burst through doors while plating the way they were if they're saying they're sprinting through just kind of help kind of speed up that gameplay a little bit more right there as well right be a little more aggressive and also but saying slight movement speed increase while plating not while moving like regularly just when plating so I agree with this change. I actually don't want to see like a whole lot of things change when it comes to player movement speeds or player abilities when it comes to movement because I like the slower gameplay of Warzone 2. I like how you don't have to be a cracked out weirdo snorting G Fuel all day long watching Twitch streams of how to you know, min-max your gameplay because 
it's a casual game. Let's be real. Call of Duty is a casual game. We don't need to be making such like crazy outplay abilities for players. I think put a big emphasis on aim and positioning and map knowledge is really where it should be for Warzone 2. And I kind of like where it's sitting right now when it comes to the gameplay. Call me crazy, but as a casual fan, I like that a lot. Uh, we're seeing a lot of changes when it comes to the buy stations as well. Uh, going from a dynamic spawn system where they kind of spawn, spawn randomly to now a static spawn system across the map with also loadout drop markers but having unlimited stock in those stations as well i agree with that change especially because if you earn enough money to get that loadout you should be able to get that loadout and uh, i do agree with the static spawn system i did like the dynamics because it mixes up things a little bit more but with static spawns is that the problem is that you would come across areas with just vast nothing so you'd be in a void of being able to use your money at all i've had it happen many times where I had plenty of cash on me, but I wasn't able to actually utilize it because the nearest buy station was like 600 meters away or something like that. Kind of ridiculous. Now, the strongholds, they were pretty vague about this one, so I'm kind of curious to see how that's going to play out. Uh, basically, same with Season 2 will bring changes to the rewards players receive from strongholds and black site completion, and also saying adjustment to enemy AI combatants damage. So probably will be taking less damage as you can be sworn quite easily at these different locations. Um, obviously, you can get your loadout weapon from this, which is really great. I think actually just your full on loadout. I don't really bother with strongholds a whole lot because I find that it's just like a little bit less of an effective way to get your loadout or at least the weapon that you need. Uh, so maybe it'll make it more viable, less viable. Again, we'll wait until we get some actual details. Now we have DMZ news, which I've actually been super addicted to playing DMZ right now. Like me and Arash have been playing it a ton right now. It's kind of my main mode. It's kind of like I want to make a dedicated video about DMZ because I feel like it's like the one bashing of ca casual Call of Duty still left in this game. Uh, but that's a different video for a different topic right there. I'm talking about enemy tuning. And basically to say that with season two, they're gonna have a little bit more of a ramp up when it comes to going from low tier enemies to high tier enemies you face. Cause they say right now that basically from player feedback, it goes from just like zero to 100, a little too quick. So I would kind of agree with that as well. Most of the times I feel like I just need to be a little more tactical with my movements and a little bit more logical rather than just kind of run around like it's a Call of Duty campaign. Uh, spawn points are gonna be mixing up a little bit as well. They mentioned that when you're starting spawn points, they'll probably to keep you more around uh, like spots where you can loot and have contracts. They mentioned that like how player feedback said that, well, sometimes you spawn in and there wouldn't really be much to do around you. So they're keeping that a little bit more consolidated. And like with the enemy combatants, mission difficulty tuning, saying that basically that the ramp up from low level to high level was just like too steep of an upgrade. Uh, so they mentioned they're gonna be coming at a little bit more of a gradient when it comes to going from easy to hard difficulty of completing those challenges, which I would agree with. It seems like a lot of them are like mundane, super easy to like, wow, that's oddly specific. Uh, the curious thing, also one thing I was really curious about this was the seasonal refresh with season two, like what's gonna be happening with the missions, which is like the the core gameplay mechanic of DMZ, right? They have all new missions are coming to season two, including a refresh of your current faction mission progress and an inventory contraband slash keys resets. Uh, we're getting a new location with a new exclusion zone. I haven't had, actually had a chance to play around with the exclusion zone within season one, but looking forward to playing around with that. Now we have some multiplayer news. We haven't been a while, we haven't really heard much about multiplayer, aka the weapon attachment simulator right here. Uh, basically, they say that the audio occlusion was also having issues with, while not as bad as the previous one that we mentioned, but they did say they're not using the advanced system that they have right now. So that's getting updated, which sounds really mundane and boring, but actually will have a great impact on how your gameplay actually plays out within the game. So that sometimes these minor little things make can make a big difference. You have some perk balancing, basically when it comes to your bonus and your ultimate perks, saying that they reduce bonus perk cost by 50% and ultimate perk cost by 25%. So you'll be getting those perks sooner within the game. This has me a little concerned as I don't really feel like it takes too long to get your ultimate perk or get your bonus perk within the game as long as you're actually like being active and doing well within the game. Uh, this has me a little worried because now you're going for basically having the traditional three perk system in Call of Duty to now effectively a four perk system. Uh, we'll see how fast it actually updates. And if it's a little too fast, I'm sure they'll probably tune it back a little bit, but this will make Ghost much more of a viable perk within multiplayer. So you guys who like to rush, such as myself or flank around into enemies uh, spawns, it'll be a little bit more of a viable gameplay uh, style. So keep speeding up the gameplay a little bit more. So I'm all for that when it comes to the multiplayer side of things. Uh, they also mentioned that there's gonna be some weapon tunings coming in with season two for the multiplayer side of things. Again, no specifics, but again, can assume 
RPK Fennec most likely getting the nerf right here. Uh, hardcore is coming back, which if you're playing hard, if you're a hardcore fan and you've been missing it out with Modern Warfare 2, well, now you get that back. Uh, we also some playlist tunings and things like that changing with it. Uh, ranked play though, I'm excited about this coming in with season two for Modern Warfare 2. Uh, interesting thing, so in par partnership with Treyarch. Call of Duty League and Infinity Ward. Obviously Infinity Ward because, well, this is the game that they developed. Call of Duty League, I'm glad they would probably do that. Probably more talking about map rotations and GAs and things like that. But interesting thing is Treyarch being thrown into this. Treyarch is known to having ranked play within their games. And when they do, they actually have a ranking system. Uh, compared to what we had in Modern for 2019, they did have a ranked mode, but there was no ranking system behind it. It was basically just kind of like, playing regular social slayer or it's playing your social modes but with no wacky things that might be a little bit imbalanced if there's an actual ranking system tied to this i would be down to grind out ranks in call of duty and get a little sweaty because like well those skill-based matchmakers already making those lobbies sweaty so might as well have something to show for it right <laughs> and then overall the state right here that we get a little bit of a time frame of what to expect here saying that february 8th will be the date we'll get an announcement blog kind of, i'm sure we'll get some more details about the different tunings and things that are like that are coming with season two of modern warfare 2. And of course once we get that information i'll share with you guys here on the channel